Hello and welcome to Houston in Texas. Now I've been spending the last three weeks traveling around the United States, checking out different aviation and space museums. I also ran into Joe Biden and I caught COVID, but all good things must come to an end. And tonight I'm heading back to Sydney with Qantas on board one of their refurbished A380s. Now I'm really keen to see what the new business class product is like. So why don't you join me as we head to Los Angeles and then over to Sydney. I make videos about planes. If you're into trip reports from flights around Australia and the world and tours through significant aircraft and museums, then please check out my channel and subscribe. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook. I arrived into Los Angeles on a United Airlines flight into Terminal 7 and I had to make my way to Terminal B, which is also known as the Tom Bradley International Terminal. In the past, Los Angeles has had a poor reputation for long queues and a poor design, but in recent years they've connected the terminals, so I didn't need to pass through the infamous TSA security checks once again. But admittedly, it was a long walk, which was fine for me, but I could see it being a bit of an issue if you're less mobile. And because of all the escalators, etc., I don't imagine that a buggy could take you the full way. It was hundreds of meters of corridors, although it was all well signed. Eventually, I made it to the Tom Bradley Terminal, which is where the One World Lounge used by Qantas for business passengers is located. There's also a first class lounge, which you can see in the distance here, although it's currently closed. There was quite a queue at the lounge due to the number of people needing boarding passes after taking domestic connections, and myself included, although I believe those requirements are stopping soon, so I won't dwell on them. In the end, the lounge staff saw my vaccine details and printed the boarding pass there. The lounge itself is pretty nice. Unfortunately, there's no view of the airport apron, although it was dark at 9pm anyway. It's nice and modern and has a Qantas theme to it, although it's shared by all of the One World Airlines. There is a bar there serving barista coffee and booze. Now I had no idea if tipping was required for the complimentary drinks and I didn't have any American cash on me, so my liver had a break and I drank water instead. The lounge was full of separate areas with different themes. Here you've got this big circular thing and a woodish fire burning away. There was a buffet including both hot and cold options. These include potato and leek soup, Asian noodles with honey chicken, veggies, sesame and soy, spiced cauliflower and mac and cheese with pumpkin, mushroom and parsley. Now I'm usually a bit meh about this type of mass produced food but it actually tasted pretty good. Now one of the biggest advantages of lounges is the access to a shower and I believe there are 16 of them in this lounge. They were clean and very modern, although the tap was clearly an IQ test and I failed dismally, so I might have been a bit sneaky and brushed my teeth in the shower. After using the hairdryer, I was back out into the lounge to grab a bite. I added some greens and snuck in dessert, which was a honey cake with spiced cream fraiche and macadamia granola, and a chocolate brownie. I went to look around and it's great to see the bustle of airports returning. And here's our aircraft, Victor Hotel Oscar Quebec Delta, an Airbus A380-800. Boarding was called and we entered directly into the upper deck. There's a smaller business cabin on the left hand side, although my seat, 19 Alpha, was on the bigger cabin turning right. Here I'm showing you the bulkhead seat which has a wider leg recess, and here's the middle seats with that privacy screen that can be lowered which may or may not be a good thing depending on your travel partner. And in my excitement I actually walked past my seat. The seats alternate between being closer to the aisle or window, so mine was the less private version. Looking at 20 Alpha here, you can see that the ledge offers a little more privacy. All seat tours begin with the overhead air vents, and there's two and they had a very strong flow of air. There's the adjustable in-flight entertainment screen, and below that is plenty of leg room. There's the magazine holder on the side, and from the inside of the ledge slides the table which felt solid enough. There's plenty of ledge space, and under here is a remote control if you don't want to use the touchscreen and a mirror. There's the buttons for the seats and the lighting. And in here is more storage space. In fact, storage is really good in this design. 
There's a universal power plug, USB and the audio prongs and above that is the reading lamp. And what's unique to the window seats in the A380 only are these large storage bins just in here. And that was my jacket that I'd put in there earlier. And just here next to my legs is more storage space for my boots. Now I know some airlines are moving towards having doors, but for me, having so much storage space is really good as it saves you from having to stand and access the overhead bins. On the control panel, there is this do not disturb button, which makes your seat number go red, so the crew know to let you sleep. But I suppose make sure you don't accidentally hit that and miss brekkie. Here's the amenity kits, which are a retro design and all a part of the 100 year celebration, and I think they look great. There's the usual eye masks, toothbrush, and creams. There was a round of boarding drinks, including water, orange juice, or sparkling wine. There's also pajamas, which I think is a real perk on these long flights. After 14 hours, it's really great to be able to get back into your fresh clothes just before landing. Here's a bathroom, which is fairly basic. It has a baby change table and even its own air vents, which I suppose is useful if it's all a bit straining. Qantas have a really good safety video with aircraft and crews from across the last 100 years. It reminds me of my visit to the Qantas Founders Museum in Longreach, which has a number of those aircraft on display. And I always giggle about the e-cigarettes, whatever they are. Now there were no wet towels handed out, which I wonder if that's a COVID thing. We backed out and headed for the runway. Now being night time, the takeoff footage was pretty average, although as anyone who's flown on the A380 will know, it's such an uneventful process. The engines are so quiet that you just waft up into the air. Now I love flying in the 747, but this is a totally new and quieter experience. There was no round of drinks, which I was surprised about, although I wonder if the priority was just getting the meal served, as it was a 11pm departure, and I guess people just want to eat and drink and then go to sleep. The crew certainly looked busy serving what was a really large business cabin. Here's dinner, which was their chicken breast with Mexican rice, kale, tomatillo sauce, and pepper to salsa. And it was served with a green leaf salad and bread. And it was all washed down with a 2018 Riesling from the Clare Valley. And for dessert, I went with a chocolate and coffee mousse cake and cream fraiche and a Diebeltoli Noble One dessert wine from the Riverina region of New South Wales. Now one of the upgrades with the new A380 interior is the installation of a lounge. While they kinda had one with the old interior, it was really just a cushion. It was a bit difficult to film as my GoPro struggles in low light, but coming up from the stairs, in the centre here is a large TV screen that displays a number of different scenic natural locations around Australia. There is this self-serve setup directly on the right and then some snacks. And then you've got these lounge chairs here. Stepping over to the other side are more chairs and a few more tables, and there's even a USB plug under here. It's a huge upgrade from the previous lounge, although there's no actual bar like the Emirates or Qatar A381, and it's also fairly dark with no windows. But still, somewhere to stretch your legs on one of these 14 hour flights is nice. Then I was back to my seat, which I turned into a bed and installed the extra mattress and had a nap. I napped on and off for maybe 6 or so hours before sitting up and watching a movie. Again, it's difficult to capture on camera, but the sunrise was incredible. It started as this really bright red light peering from behind the clouds and then became lighter with orange and purple hues. It's sights like these that really remind you of the magic of flight. Yes, TSA checks and the COVID paperwork was painful, but here I was hurtling through the air at 38,000 feet in a very large tin can across the biggest ocean in the world. It was still a few hours before brekkie, so I had a snack which were available throughout the flight, and it was this chicken schnitzel and Swiss cheese toasted sandwich with coleslaw, and an espresso, which after spending a month in the US was great to drink coffee again. Although I will admit American coffee has improved since I last visited. I watched another movie while enjoying the sunrise and eventually breakfast arrived, and as you can see, it was quite a lot. I went with a buttermilk and ricotta pancakes, uh, with strawberry, cinnamon yogurt and toasted almonds, and a Brook Farm macadamia muesli with cranberries. 
there was a muffin and a croissant, both of which were warm and tasted fresh, and fruit salad and yogurt, healthy juice and another coffee. Now I see that Qantas have listened to feedback as the butter is now soft and easy to spread. The TV screen is crisp and bright enough to manage any reflections. There is the standard and quite impressive 3D map, which is always interesting to discover where you are in the world. And there was a decent amount of TV shows and movies. Now I did say on my 787 video that I thought the content was lacking, although this was the same, so maybe I was just grumpy back then, as I found enough movies to keep me entertained on this flight. Importantly, there were no advertisements, which is great as many airlines are now sneaking them in and sometimes they're pretty long. Eventually, we started our descent down into Sydney, bringing to an end this 14 and a half hour flight. So, how was it? I really like this seat. I think it's private enough, as you can see with this sweeping footage, where you can't really see any other passengers. And remember that this is even less private than the seat in front and behind of me. There's plenty of usable storage space, which is great as I always carry heaps of junk when I fly. This bit is great for storing things like your laptop and even provides a comfortable armrest if you're a vlogger or social media influencer trying to get a good shot. The leg room does get a little tight when the seat is flat and your legs are well down into the recess. So if that is a problem, then the bulkhead seats are better as they do have more room. But I thought it was okay for my 180 centimeter frame. The in-flight entertainment had enough content to keep me happy, although I still wonder when Qantas are going to introduce in-flight Wi-Fi, as everyone else seems to have it. And business travelers potentially can't be offline for 15 hours, nor social media influencers who can't survive the lack of validation for that long. The food and drink were fine, although I'm not a foodie, so I'll let you judge from my footage. The aircraft itself always amazes me how comfortable and quiet it is. The 787 is good, but this is just a whole new level above it. Although because the walls on the upper deck are angled upwards, it's a little difficult to film out, which is obviously a major problem facing human existence. So that explains why the landing footage includes a lot of the window sill itself. The crew were all really friendly and always offering anything to make the trip more comfortable. The cabin temperature was also nice and cool. Airlines often keep them too warm and when you're trying to sleep, it's always easier to wrap yourself up in a blanket and keep heat rather than lose heat if you're already in a stinking hot cabin. So that was something I really appreciated on this flight. But otherwise, it was a great flight and a good way to end my trip to the US. I visited a whole lot of aviation and space museums throughout the country and recorded footage of many iconic aircraft. I've already uploaded a few tour videos, although many more will be coming in coming months, so make sure you've checked out my channel and subscribe. Thanks for watching.